Hey, this is Stephanie, the hands, hair, and heart of Cornerstone Create. Welcome to my YouTube channel and my blog. Today I'm entering in into the Neat and Tangled um, tutorial throwdown. This is going to be my second entry because rule number four from Neat and Tangled blog says that you can enter as many times as you like. And this is going to be, I think they have at the time that I'm recording this, 14 more hours for this competition. So I'm going to get this in there before midnight tonight. And I'm going to make this do what it does. So if you want to see my first video, I'll go ahead and provide you that link above and hit the description box and I'll go ahead and provide you with a link to the blog so that you can see that as well. So if you can't tell, I've had my Wheaties this morning. I've had my Wheaties. I've had my pumpkin spice latte. I've had it this morning. I'm out here doing cars. I'm feeling like a mom today. My, uh, was it? my baby shark is sitting on the couch watching baby shark. My youngest infant shark is still asleep. I mean, it's great this morning. It's my day off heading into a short week at work. Life is wonderful. All that being said, let's go ahead and get into this card. So my kitty's looking a little green right now and it's not because he's under the weather, it's because I masked him in using fine line liquid, uh, liquid mask. I had that on video, but I'd done this so many times that I wasn't sure which time was gonna be the right time. And I just had to play around with that liquid mask and got to the point where if you put on a layer as thin as possible, then the paper underneath won't tear up with the mask. I have a whole desk full of defective kitties to show you that I know what I'm talking about. Right now I'm ink blending with Abandoned Coral Distress Oxide. My blending tool looks very well used and very well loved, but that comes from not using this for just Abandoned Coral. I know it was really popular for people to use their ink blending tools for one color or one color only, but I just don't have that many colors and I definitely don't have that many ink blenders. So I just like to use them for relatively the same color family. So this is going to be about all my pinkish oranges, salmon kind of colors. What you see me doing now is peeling off that mask. So you need to be really careful when you're doing this because again, I have the experience. I've done this super fast and I've managed to tear up the paper underneath. And you don't wanna do that because then you'll be doing your whole project all over and it's just gonna cost you more time, energy, and you know, just stuff that you don't have right now. At this point, my Murphy's Law sense was, uh, was just ringing and it was telling me that if you keep going the same direction, you're going to mess up the kitty's ear. So I came from a different direction and I think that did the trick. The mask is mostly off. I'm just going to flick away these little extra bits of whatever this uh, mask is. And I'm going to rub and make sure there's no residue left on my paper. And then we're going to get into some alcohol coloring. I wanted to color a dark kitty just because with this background being so like vibrant I just I didn't want to color him as like an orange kitty and kind of fade into that vibrancy of the paper so I decided I wanted a smoky kind of black mostly gray cat I'm coloring in with C9 which is a cool gray and it's relatively dark I thought that this was going to be my darkest color turns out it wasn't I actually come in and use in uh in one zero which is black that's actually my darkest color and i like that he wound up coming out a little smoky just an fyi my light source at first was coming from the lower left hand so i was making all my colors and all my dark colors on the right side and while i was coloring it i changed my mind i was just in a different mood and decided to switch it up a little bit and i decided to change the light source to come from directly in the front so if you see me kind of go in and add dark colors after I've already done my dark, that's why. I'm coloring with C7 and this is going to be what you see for most of the cat. This is what's going to make him look all smoky. I'm being careful to avoid his nose because I want to color that in as a kind of pink, peachy kind of color. And I left his ears white, but I'm going to go back in and color those with like a super light gray just so that they'll have a little depth and dimension to them. So I have a little bit of free time right now while I'm coloring, and I'm gonna to talk to you about my husbeast. First, he's awesome, but he's also my mortal enemy. Professionally, that is. See, I'm an engineer by profession, and my husband is a mechanic by profession. So we get into it a lot about the way things work. And fundamentally, you would think that that makes for a bad relationship. But no, actually for us, it, it works out great because we both know what we're talking about, but we have to concede to the other. Recent example, I wanted to build a shelf, but I wanted like a funky looking shelf on my bedroom wall and I didn't want like the normal looking one. Because while three slats on the wall would have been great and it would have done the job, it wouldn't have been awesome. 
So I designed this shelf. Shelf has a whole schematic. I drew it on an index card, so it definitely wasn't the scale, but I explained this to him. I even told him where to put the nails and all that. He gets my index card schematic and straight up he just looks doubtful. Full disclaimer, I'm about to put on my doubtful husband voice. Stephanie, I know everything and this isn't going to work. I see your little drawing and it's cute, but this isn't going to work in the real world. Just show me a picture and I can build it in my head. And I'm saying, well, I know you can build this in your head, but I need this in the real world. And for real, straight up, this is what I'm saying to him. This is the same exact thing that I go through at work with the guys there. Stephanie, you have a four-year degree, and that's great and all. But I have real-world tangible experience, and I've put my hand on this, and this isn't going to work. And you know what? They're right. They do have real-world experience, and it's very important to capture that. You know, like, he probably does know this a lot better than me, and my husband probably does, and the guys at work probably do. So tell me what's wrong with my, with my plan. How can I incorporate your ideas and your tangible worth experience? Like, tell me, and I'll do it. You know, as long as it works out, you know, to spec and all that. I realize that there are more perspectives than just mine and that getting everybody's perspective and everybody's experience is only going to be what's best for the project. So tell me what I mean, what's what is my plan lacking? And it's at this moment that everyone gets quiet somewhere, a pin drops. And I'm thinking, you know what? Someone should go pick that up before they step on it because it's going to be bad for your foot. Because there's never any response to what it is. There's always maybe, uh, well, you, maybe you could do this and maybe you can do that. But the last time we did that, it didn't work out. And now I'm at the point where I have to persuade you to at least try what's on the paper. And this is the same for my husband as it is for the guys at the work. Did you try it? And then they try it and everything works out. Thank you. But on the flip side, there are some times where my husband totally owns me and I have to, you know, I have to eat a little crow. Crow isn't, you know, one of my favorite things to eat, but, you know, it's getting to the point where, you know, it's a little good. I like bittersweet, uh, bittersweet chocolate. So that's what I compare it to. Just a little bit of bittersweet chocolate sometimes, but it's very rare. It's rare. I have to tell you about that story in another video because I'm running low on time, but it has something to do with my craft shelf that I currently work on. Well, my craft table that my husband built from scratch. All that being said, my husband's awesome. He gave me a little care package the other day. Well, yesterday, just to say he cares. He gave me a card that says thinking of you. And he gave me like a bag of blue Doritos because they're like my favorite. And he also gave me a snicker bar. And those are like two things that are atrocious together. But apart, they taste great. And he knows that it's about me. Like those are my two favorite like snack foods. Thank you, babe. So getting back to the card at hand, I am using the repeated stamping technique to fill in the background. I'm using the small heart from the from the kitty's favorite things stamp set. I think it was a great fill and I only did it on the part that was colored in. I used Potter's Clay Memento dye ink to do this. I think the combination of the Potter's Clay, which is kind of like a reddish brown with the abandoned coral worked out really well together. The next part is stamping the sentiment, which shouldn't have been as hard as I made it, but I didn't have a plan before I went into this. So I kind of just kept going with it and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then when I kind of messed up a little bit, I didn't want to start over. And I just wanted it, you know, I didn't want to start over. So I tried to do something to make it work and it did work. I just wanted to say you are perfect with P-U-R-R, -R, like kitty purr, but uh it came in the banner and I didn't want the whole banner so what I did was I colored in the purr with a red uh, Tombow marker and then I did the effect with the black Tombow marker so of course you can't just color on the stamp and get that effect I thought you could but I found out four tries later that it just wouldn't work out and I was like duh these are watercolor markers you need to paint them with a little bit of water for that to work so that's what I did in doing that I messed up and got a little bit of color where I shouldn't have so then I just colored in part of the banner then wetted it and it kind of just gave me the look of having that perfect underlined i still messed up with the little heart there was a little bit of red so i stamped another heart on top of it and colored it in with the red tombow watercolor and everything worked out great 
So that was the card. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. And make sure you check out my blog. Like and subscribe to me on YouTube. And I'll see y'all next week with another video. Bye.